This is going to be part two of our terrain tutorial. And in uh, part zero, we saw a demo of what the app was going to look like when captured through the Oculus itself. In part one, we did almost all the basically all the setup steps. And we went as far as step number three, where we changed the skybox to a very nice one from the 8K uh, skybox package. And now we're up to actually creating a terrain. So we start by creating it just like any other uh, game object, right click or, you know, game object create either or, and it's considered a 3D and it's called a terrain. At this point, I'd like to look at it from above and I'm going to zoom out a lot. Now, I want you to notice that, where's my camera, uh, that the terrain uh, is put at uh, where it's a uh, bottom left corner is at zero zero. But you know, that's we usually want to start by being at the center of the terrain. The terrain is like a kilometer by a kilometer. A kilometer is about two thirds of a mile, a thousand meters by a thousand meters. It's pretty big. So if we want our to be in the middle, we need to move this terrain like this. So we're in the middle of it. The camera right now is at zero zero. It ends up because it's a, a, a thousand by a thousand that we're going to place it at negative 500 X and negative 500 Z. Y, of course, is the height that stays the same because it's like a think of it as like a plane, but it's a plane that's much bigger than most planes and also that we can um, start sculpting it. So again, we just finished this step that says to create a terrain and to change the terrain transform to X negative one, uh, negative 500 and Z negative 500. We just did that. The next step is to go to the terrain settings and this uh, might take time. I've experimented and read a lot about terrain settings and we need to change a lot of the defaults um, so it matches the rendering engine of the Oculus. Uh, the rendering engine of the Oculus, we're going to have so many details that the rendering engine of the Oculus can't render all of them at the same time. So it basically renders a lot of details as the camera gets close to them. And in order for that to happen kind of nice and smooth, we have to use these settings. So what we're going to do is in this video, be very meticulous. I'm going to arrange like I like to do S things side by side, go to the terrain. And then it says there's a settings icon for the terrain. You know, the cog wheel, we're all you know used to that. And I'm going to go through these numbers and uh, adjust them in all the settings, adjust them to be exactly what it says in the screenshot. Zero, draw, reconnect. These are not really changed. Here's where it starts being different. Pixel error and base map setting 200 and 220. Uh, Two-sided blend probes here out of the four checkboxes. First three are checked. Then these values, 83 instead of 80. Uh, this is especially important. Pixel distance and the detail density, uh, 0 0.4. Four, one, five. These are the results of a lot of experiments that I've done and that a lot of people who know Oculus have done. Um, tree distance, 2000. This is where it starts. How far from the camera do trees have to uh, be in order for the camera to start try to render them? And billboard start. Billboard is like the, um, the sketch of the trees like you know just a 2d picture from a, from very far away instead of 50 286 uh the fade length which is where it starts fading from not detailed to detailed seven meters um and tree mesh that stays 50. then we got the wind settings which we will see will become very important for the for the grass uh 0 0.33, 1, um, size 0 0.5, and 1.0155 for the bending, how much the grass 
will bend. This stays the same. Here, this is like I said, this is the size of the terrain. We'll be able to change that later. But the default is a thousand meters by a thousand meters, about two thirds of a mile by two thirds of a mile. The height stays the same. The detail resolution stays the same. All this stays the same. Good. Then there's a few more settings under that, uh, which are um, the height map resolution. We're going to bump this up to 1025 by 1025. Uh, the control texture resolution is going to be bumped up to about 2K. This stays the same, and then this checkbox is on. This scale light map is going to be basically twice instead of 0 0.0256, is 0 0.0512. Um, okay, I hope I'm remembering to do everything, and I think everything else stays the same. Very important not just to save, but to save project. So take your time and uh, do those, you know, change those settings. Those are not going to make much of a difference while we're in um, Unity, but they're going to make a lot of difference in the rendering in the Oculus once the game is done. So at this point, I'm enlarging again, and we can mark this step done. Next, step seven. In the Terrain Inspector, select Paint Terrain, and it's it's an icon. And we're going to start editing terrain layers. Add a layer. Uh, we're going to start with grass. So how do we do that? A layer is basically different. It's like a painter's palette to paint different textures on the terrain. So terrain, instead of settings, we're going to go to this icon that looks like a paintbrush, paint terrain. And the first thing that comes up is paint texture. But we don't have any textures to paint. So we're going to create some. We're going to click this button, Edit Terrain Layers, Create Layer, not Add, but Create Layer. And the first thing I'm going to do, let's say that by default, this terrain is covered with nice, you know, grass. So I'm going to use this. This is one of the textures that we uh, imported. Zero to grass, double click, and see how it, uh, the whole terrain is now covered with grass. Now, to make it look even more realistic, I select it and it lets me add a normal map, which is usually right next to it. Here's the 0 to grass 1 normal. They always go in pairs. I can also, and the guide says that, play with the normal scale. Remember, normal is what makes it look like, uh, like it's, uh, it's it, like textures, like more or less. I think I'm going to stay with one for right now. Maybe a little more. Maybe a little more textured. Good. Save. Um, as the guide says, um, we did this. We add the normal. Repeat step number eight to create layers for dry land, dirt, ground stone, and snow, and maybe there's another kind of grass, but definitely for dry land, dirt, ground, st uh, ground stone, and snow. Let's do that. How do we create more layers? Edit terrain layers, create layer. I want dry land, and then I select it and add, select that uh, thumbnail and add its normal map. Dry land, normal. Edit terrain, create layer. This time I'm going to add the 04 ground. And again, select it so I can assign the ground normal. Um, edit terrain layers, create layer. And after the normal, I'm going to do the ground stone, which is good for like rocky um, places. And again, select it and add the normal that I brought with it. Um, and one more for the, you know, like the tops of the mountains. I've also brought in a snow um, texture and we're going to add a snow normal to it. Good. Of course, file, save and save project. I always like to save twice. 
And that covers step number nine. And finally, we get to see what the, how the terrain is different from just a regular plane. In the paint, not paint, but paint, terrain tool, uh, switch to raise or lower terrain. We're going to do that. And after that, we're going to start with a brush called built-in brush number six. I find that to be the most useful one. Size about 100, opacity about 50. And we're going to start creating mountains and hills. This is really where I see uh, my students spending most of the time experimenting. How is this done? First of all, we can look at it like this, or I can hold Option uh, on the Mac or Alt on Windows to kind of uh, tilt this more so I can look at it still from above, but you know more uh, perspective. Then in the terrain, in that same tool, it looks like a brush, I just switch to raise or lower terrain. And I get all kinds of brushes, like a perfectly uh, round one, a round one with fuzzy edges, and so on. I just find number five or six, this is number five, this is number six, to be, you know, kind of the texture of, of mountains, of rocks. I'm going to make the brush size about 100. And its opacity, which we're going to play around with, I'm going to start with about 50. And I want to show you basically what I'm doing. As I'm brushing over this, I'm creating mountains. And if I click and uh, drag up, I'm making those mountains high. Now you can see that as I'm dragging, it looks nice and sharp, but when I uh, let go, it looks smooth. Part of it is because we're really far away from it. Part of it is the opacity. As I increase the opacity of the brush, it becomes a lot more pronounced. and I can create very high mountains. Also, the size of the brush will be the area that it affects. If I create a really big brush, then it just affected a huge area and it create, can create like huge mountains here. Uh, I'm, I prefer smaller brushes. But that's totally up to you. Once you get you know used to it, uh, also experiment with other brushes. Uh, what would it look like if I did like a round brush? It would create like places like these. If I get close, see what I'm doing? Textures like these. Um, at this point, what I want you to do, and I will stop the tutorial with that, is to basically create a ridge of mountains. I'm going to go back to my bulletin 6. To create a ridge of mountains around the rim, but leave the center flat. This is where we are. I find it very helpful if we don't create a mountain in the uh, uh, center, because then we'll have to raise the camera or we'll be in the belly of the mountain. Um, so for the camera to stay at two meters above ground, I'm going to leave ground at zero where the camera is. But I'm going to create a bunch of mountains all around. I'm going to stop the um, video capture. I will work on this and I'll see you in part three.